What's going on, everybody? It is January 23rd, Tuesday slate. Uh, not the most interesting set of games, and we are coming off of one of the most ridiculous nights of fantasy that I've been a part of. Uh, I was able to put up 347, which, if you told me that earlier in the day, I would have thought, crazy night. I did amazing. And, you know, I did well enough to, you know, finish in the money in this particular tournament. Um... This is the scintillating slam. But the winner had 430. Uh, the cut line was like 350 in a lot of places. Um, Demarcus Cousins finished with 97.8 fantasy points. Uh, it's just, it was just insane. Everything that could go off was going off. Chalk hit at a ridiculous rate. Um push cut lines super high i mean like ad put up 60 and is an afterthought ad had 34 and 9 and it's just like huh well boogie had 44 24 and 10 insane so i went to bed knowing you know my lineup was doing pretty well thinking okay i've got wiggins and bielita coming up if they do well, you know, like, I should be good. So instead of going immediately to the FanDuel app, I opened up the box, my box score app and uh, went and looked. And I was like, oh, B. Elisa, like, smashed value. Nice. Oh, Wiggins at 40. Like, I have a feeling this is going to be really good. And then uh, I opened it up and it was just like, no, it was, you know, average at best because everybody in the world... <laughs> went insane last night. It's just one of those days. Got to keep grinding. Um, I wish that I would have trusted myself when I said that you didn't need to have Greg Monroe because there was value elsewhere and that, you know, Cat and Boogie looked okay. If I could have ended up with Boogie, could have used those hundred. But, you know, those are the decisions that you make. So we've got five games tonight. Um, Spurs Cavs would have been like interesting, but now it's just sort of interesting from the sidelines. Kawhi grumblings, Kevin Love grumblings, Derek Rose is back, so who knows there. Warriors and Knicks is awful. You would have liked to see Lakers and Celtics be a little bit more interesting of a game, but it's not, so we'll see if anything pops up. I'm not expecting a ton because uh, it's kind of ugly. Let's get into it, though. So, first game up, Magic hosting the Kings. The Orlando Magic are six-and-a-half-point favorites at home uh, hosting the Kings. So, let's let's check it all out. I assume that I'm comically low on Aaron Gordon like I normally am. Yeah, I wouldn't say comically. 8,500. So, he needs 42. Hasn't hit value since January 6th. Had a 40-point game, but otherwise not great. Um, obviously, it's a decent matchup, but I'm not married to it. We'll see where the value ends up. Fournier, 6,300 on FanDuel, 6,100 on DK. That would be 30 and change. Uh, he's been pretty hot lately three straight or three out of his last five 30 point games one of them 29 and a half so nothing that'll kill you um i'd be okay with that Ooh, not a lot to like here for the magic third highest implied total in a terrible defensive team and he's still having trouble finding value it's just Let's you know what the pricing's like tonight. Peyton, 7,100. That's 35. He's had two 40-point games recently. Almost 35 in his most recent one. You know, you're in it for the matchup, but it's not like these guys are jumping off the page. And then Jonathan Simmons, 5,300. I guess...
Biombo, 66, would be 33. Yeah, that one's not for me. Check out the Kings now. Uh, Kings, 103.5 implied total is 8th. Look at that optimal, 474.9. I like... It wouldn't even shock me if someone had that. That's a very reasonable lineup. Like, I'd be surprised that someone got on Eton Moore last night, but the rest of that is perfectly reasonable. Just insane. I seriously woke up thinking, like, okay, I'm going to have the biggest night I've ever had in fantasy. <laughs> And I was like, oh no, you're just barely over the cut line. When I saw that Wiggins had 40, I think my heart skipped a beat. Because I just knew how the rest of my team was playing. I didn't even go to look at Bradley Beal. I didn't realize the Wizards played like garbage. Alright, Kings. Um, this is a tricky one, just because of the way they're resting people. So they rested Randolph last night. I'm assuming he would play tonight. Uh, I've got Kufus out right now and no VC Fox is 5700 that's 28 he's had a couple 30 point games recently I need to shrink that time span there we go yeah he's gotten he's gotten there recently no reason to think that he couldn't tonight That's not how you type that. Um, I like Fox more than Peyton, uh, given the two. Uh, I don't want any part of Bogdan at 6,600 on FanDuel, but I would get it. That's not remotely close to where you should type that. <laughs> I'm frazzled this morning. Okay, Willie Cauley Stein, 7,200. That's 36. Um, he's had two 44 plus point games in the past two weeks. Uh, Orlando, not the best against big men. I like Willie Cauley Stein a lot tonight. Matchup fits in perfectly. It's actually a two. Come on, FanDuel. Get it together. Buddy healed 5,700 on FanDuel, 4,700 on DK. Needs 28 on FanDuel. Um, yeah, he can get there. I, I won't have it, but he looks great on uh, DK. And then Scal, 5,400 on FanDuel, 4,400 on DK. DraftKings desperately wants you to uh, play the Kings tonight. Um, so I'm going to say he's a FanDuel 3. And he's a DK 2. It's just, uh, those prices are insane. He needs 26 to hit 6x. He's done it in his last two. He's done it in three of his last four. Like, it's just he shouldn't be 4,400. Is really all that there is to it. Not even close. It should be like, I don't know, 5,400. <laughs> all right, to OKC. Thunder hosting the Brooklyn Nets. 111.5 implied total is second. They are 10 point favorites. Ugh, just a, a yuck game. Nets, now that uh, Russell is back, are tricky. Oh, good God. Okay. Um, so Paul George is 8,000. Needs 40. Done it two out of the last three. Um, I 
I'm okay with it. I feel like I should be a little bit more okay with it. Um, three. Russ is probably a one for me if he's not at 12 2. 12,200 on FanDuel, 11 8 on DK. You need 60 plus from Russ. He's done that two out of the last six. Uh, I think this game really fits him well. Um, not someone that's overly reliant on the three ball. So he's a two. Uh, it's hard for me to get all the way up to a one. Uh, that's you like I usually need to see a little value in salary for you to be a guy that I would just get in the lock status, so to speak. Mello is seventy two hundred. That's thirty six. Uh, he's been coming on strong lately. Three straight games above that number. A fourth at thirty three. Still just a three for me though. I don't like the price. And then uh, Roberson. 4,000 on DK is probably fine. Robertson, Roberson. Fuck you, Bill Simmons. That's all your fault, man. I don't know how to say this dude's name because you don't know how to say this dude's name. Other than that, I'm good. So we'll go to Brooklyn now, which I imagine is just going to look like a dumpster fire unless somehow FanDuel changed all of their prices. All right, so we've got Damari Carroll at 6,200. You would need 30. I'm not interested. Has been there in three of his last, well, actually four of his last six, but this is not the matchup for him. Rondé Hollis Jefferson is at 6,800 on FanDuel, 6,300 on DK. I, I'm not interested again. They have, you know, 101.5 implied total. They're dead last. If somebody's not jumping off the page from a value perspective, I'm not going to go crazy. Um, Dinwiddie at 6,200 needs to get to 30. Um, he's probably the only thing I would be interested in. And that's still just barely. Um... I don't there's nothing there's nothing in Brooklyn for me tonight. Spurs, so no Pow, no Manu, uh still no Rudy Gay, no Kawhi. That's fucking ridiculous. And there's still only one point underdogs in Cleveland. <laughs> or there's still wait, do I have that backwards? It's not in Cleveland. One and a half point favorites at home uh, against the Cavs, even missing all of those dudes. So, the Cavs have been giving up just monstrous amounts of fantasy points to basically everybody that they play lately. Um, there's no real reason to think that that changes. Oh, I grabbed the Cavs. Uh, so, I would guess that there's going to be a lot to like here for the Spurs. Um, but, you know, let's find out. Aldridge is 9,500 on FanDuel, 8,700 on DK. We would need f like 48 for value. Uh, three straight 45 or higher, which you'd be okay with. A couple other stinkers, but uh, this should bring out the best in LaMarcus Aldridge. I don't love the price, so it's hard for me to get much higher than that. But and Bryn Forbes, min salary on FanDuel, 3,700 on DK. You know, you're trying to get to 20. He doesn't ever really do that, so. I can't just disregard him just because of how shorthanded they are. Uh, Murray, on the other hand. Jante Murray. Is 4,800 on FanDuel, 4,600 on DK. You need him to get to 25. Uh, he had 30 in his last one. If we're expecting him to 
you know, now that he has been named the starter, if he's going to be getting the minutes, which I've got him at 29 minutes for tonight, um, I love it. Uh, he's a he's a two for me across the board. If this weren't the Spurs, he'd be a one, but he could just as easily play six minutes. You know, Patty Mills plays 35, and Pop just smiles and winks at you. So who knows? Kyle Anderson, 6,200 and 5,600. Um, I had him for that seven-point stinker. 35 and 45 in the last two. I don't love this, but you can't just overlook it the way that he's been playing. And then that's it for me. Quick Cleveland. Cavs uh, in the middle of their uh, mutiny against Kevin Love. I have a 103.75 implied total, which is 7th. Um, terrible game for the Cavs. LeBron is 11,000 on FanDuel, 10-8 on DK. He needs 55. He had 33 in his last one, 28 in the game before that. Two 60s sandwiched in there. Um, I can't imagine having him because it doesn't seem like there's going to be enough value to get there. And if I'm going to spend that much money, it's going to be on uh, on Russ against the Nets compared to uh, LeBron against the Spurs. Isaiah is 6,500 on FanDuel, 6,000 on DK. You'll need 32 for him. Um, I think he's still probably a little underpriced even for this team. Kevin Love is 7,000 on FanDuel, 7,400 on DK. 35 for Love. You know, I mean, that looks that's a decent value for him. Only guy I want to look at is Dwayne Wade. Uh, 4,200 on FanDuel, 4,500 on DK. Um, I don't hate the idea at 4,200. And you can see this is uh, moving a little bit quicker. So whatever formulas I fixed worked. I appreciate everybody reaching out, though, for any thoughts and stuff. Um, I think I just had, like, a little bit of a memory leak issue. Warriors. 120.5 implied total. They are 14-point favorites at home hosting uh, the New York Knicks. Um, who's... You know, you got to assume one of these Warriors guys are going to go ham and just put this game out of reach. Figuring out who it's going to be is going to be the tricky part of it all. Uh, Clay is 6,800 on FanDuel, 6,600 on DK, which means you're looking for 35. Um, you know, he's all over the place. Knicks do give up a ton of threes, which fits Clay very well, but it's hard to get too crazy about it. He's not the only guy that shoots. Like Kevin Durant, for instance, 10-5 FanDuel, 10-5 DK. Uh, you're looking for, you know, f let's say 55. Um, he's been in the 40s most of the time, barely getting into the 50s, but gotta like Durant here. Not as much as you like Steph Curry, though. Curry is 9,600 on FanDuel. He's 10-5 on DK. Um... Same threshold, 50. Uh, again, also been in the 40s, but, you know, you're paying 900 less dollars. Um, love Curry tonight. If I'm taking anyone from Golden State, it's Curry. Curry can get that in a quarter <laughs> with the right amount of luck. And then Draymond, 8,300 and 40-plus. He's been playing out of his mind lately. It's like I'm not even trying to type that shit in the right spot. I'm not even close. I got a quieter keyboard. I'm really excited about that. But now, if I'm going to have anybody in this game, it would be some combo of Curry and Draymond. At least right now. Um, 
Although I, I would guess that when I optimize this, Durant will show up a lot because of the perils of small forward. To the Knicks. Uh, Knicks, 106.5 implied total. Actually fourth on the day, uh, but they are 14-point underdogs. So be prepared there. Um, this seems like a game where you would get a lot of run for Frank Nilakina. He should play in garbage time if it gets out of hand, but who knows? Okay, so rebounding is their only answer. We're the best offensive rebounders. So you're looking at Cantor, who I would imagine is going to get himself played off the floor. Might be a Kyle O'Quinn night, although I only have him at 18 minutes, but we'll take a look. Courtney Lee, 4,900 and 5,100, so we need 25 out of him. You know, he's in and around that area. He's the type of guy that should play most of this game if it's close. And the Zinger, 8,700 and 8,500, um, so let's say 45. He's done that. Twice, you know, two 44-ish point games. What's his history against Golden State look like? Uh, Got to assume it's not good, but... Yeah, has not been good in the past. Then again, that's all with Mellow, so who knows? Chris Dabs, poor... Um, I don't love the matchup for him, but he still looks good. Hardaway, 5,500 on FanDuel, 6,700 on DK. He's not playable on DK, um, but you only need him to get to, like, 27 on FanDuel, and that is something that I like. He's actually probably, like, a 2.5 for me. I, th I think that because of that price, it's interesting. Uh, Jarrett Jack, 4,800, not super interested in him. Um, Cantor needs 30, which I think is, is relatively possible here. I just don't trust if he's going to be on the court or not. But Beasley at 4,800 has a decent chance to do some scoring for the second unit. Um... I'm ending up with like a ton of Knicks. They're going to be that team that is probably the guy that I fill in with at some point. So build out and then uh, whatever positions I'm not filling, I probably fill them with whatever Nick fits that profile. And I think that throughout the night, you need, or throughout the day at least, um, you need to pay attention to any Knicks news where you might be able to find out if Kyle O'Quinn is going to get more minutes. Because if he can get you know, he's only he played 14, 15, 12 in the last couple. But if you can get Kyle O'Quinn into the 20s in this game, I think that he's got a chance to uh, put up some numbers. Last game on the slate, Lakers hosting the Boston Celtics. Lakers are four-point underdogs at home. Um, I don't know what to make of this team right now. Not a great matchup for them. They're ninth in implied total. You know, Boston is the number one team at minimizing fantasy production just straight across the board. So I don't, you see no green lights whatsoever. Only one set of yellows, and that's on Larry Nance. Um, this is just a brutal, brutal game. Brandon Ingram at 5,800, though. Um, you need Brandon Ingram to get to 30. Hasn't been remotely close to that. Um, but he has that sort of ability in him. Uh, Kuzma at 5,200, so he needs 25. Again, these are all like, I can't write them off in their entirety. But, you know, none of it really looks any good. Um, 
Larry Nance is the only other guy I could potentially want. And I would say that he's probably a three on DK and a four on uh, on FanDuel. How many times am I gonna not capitalize that N? <laughs> to the Celts. Uh, 106.25 implied total is fifth right now. This is a wholly uneventful slate. I hope that it looks okay when I do the optimization because it makes me want to not play, but with the wife out of town, I don't really have anything else to do. So Al Horford is 7,100 and 7,300. He would need 35. Uh, in and around there lately, which looks good. Um, so it's hard to just ignore that. Jalen Brown is 5,500 on FanDuel and 6,200 on DK. You're looking 28-ish. Again, right in that area. I like that price. Now, Kyrie, 8,500 on FanDuel, 8,900 on DK. Had a monster game in his last time out. Um, doesn't really do that all that often, though, at least not in Boston. That price is pretty prohibitive, especially on DK. Um, I'm going to say that he's a four on FanDuel only. Better options. I'd much rather have, like, Curry than than Kyrie tonight, at least for right now. Jason Tatum, 5,600. Need him to get to 33. Uh, nope, that's not right. That's bad math. Uh, 28. <laughs> It's like, fuck, he's not even close. Uh, not somebody I'm super interested in. Uh, Marcus Smart, 25. Um, that's not something I'm interested in. And I'm probably good. Ooh, so that's the list. I don't know what to make of it. But we're about to find out. Uh, it's going to give me a lot of dudes that I don't want. I can tell right now. It's one of those nights. And uh, it's not exciting. Let's put it that way. Remove. I need to change that macro. Just got to remember to do it. Okay. Alrighty, let's do 50 and we'll see what we get. Alright, so a ton of Murray, tons of Beasley, tons of Porzingis, Jalen, Russ, and Steph. So I would say that I would want to do Murray for sure. Raymond for sure. What happens if I grab Willie Colley Stein? So that's, that's a lot of Knicks. Curry, Murray, Hardaway, Smart, Jalen, Beasley, Porzingis, Draymond, Stein. Not necessarily where I'm looking. Willie Colley Stein might be a little prohibitive right now. Um. So shooting guard, Clay, Fournier, Hardaway, Courtney Lee, and Wade. I feel like I should look at Fournier just to get into that game a little bit. That, that I'm not totally upset about. Curry, Murray, Clay, Fournier, Brown, Beasley, Green, Hollis, Jefferson, Horford. And then Hollis Jefferson 6,800, so in theory I could drop down to like Larry Nance and move up somewhere else. How much money's left? No, nothing. Okay. Something like that. Gonna be a weird one. I don't think these pieces fit together really well. I'll tell you what, I'm confident there's not going to be overwhelming chalk that pushes the cash line to 350 today. <laughs> that one I'm, I'd, I'd be confident in betting on. Don't expect it. 
And I know that it's frustrating if you put up like 330 and don't cash. You can't judge these things relative to other slates. Like it, it's all about how well the high ownership guys do. That dictates the cut line. So if you, you know, like today, I put up 347. I'm not salty because I put up 347 um, because it's all relative. It's basically just like a 305 score on an average slate. Um, so try not to be too upset that uh, if you had a decent night and didn't cash, it's because you didn't have a decent night. <laughs> it's just relative. All right, 50 DK lineups. This one looks a little bit more my speed. So oh, in 50 lineups, it's still 100% Murray, 100% Scal. So that gives you an idea of how underpriced they are. So I don't even have to click on them because they're just going to be there. I liked Fox, so I'm comfortable there. Uh, I obviously like Draymond, so I'm comfortable there. Judging by this, Russ's price is dramatically better on... DraftKings, 11.8 is tricky, but let's see what it looks like if I grab Russ. It's probably too many kings, but, you know, Fox, Roberson, Hollis, Jefferson, Green, Scal, Westbrook, Tatum, Murray. That all looks really good, and you can probably... Nah, like, I wouldn't even want to... Roberson's the only guy I would try to upgrade if you could step down from Russ. Like, if you step down from Russ to Curry, now you still end up with Roberson. Something like that, you know, a little bit better. DK looks a little bit better tonight. I might actually play DK. Throw out a couple lineups and see what happens. All right, guys, that's it. Um, you guys know the drill. Like, subscribe, check me out on Twitter. Uh, I'll be around the next couple days. Wife's not back till Thursday. Um, we'll do a live show tonight at six and I'll, uh, see you there. Best of luck tonight.